Hello and welcome back to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. We thank you for joining us today. During this segment, we're going to continue our discussion on annuities and are they the fix-all panacea that is promoted uh, by many advisors out there and the uh, insurance uh, licensed advisors to sell these things. We've mentioned that I, I hear them on the radio talk shows all the time, but yet uh, they may not, I have not heard much of the counterpoint, so we're here to provide some of that information for you. I was trying to think of a way to describe this, and one of the things that came to mind is let's say that you, you've you uh, retired and you you want to build a house. You and your wife have always had this dream to build your house, and you've You've got your lot picked out, you know, maybe an acre or two out in the country, and you're just so excited. You've got your lot, and you, you interview home builders. And you go through, and you narrow it down to a couple, and then there's one guy, and he's just, he is the best salesman in the world, and he says that he, he can build you whatever you want, and he guarantees his product. It's guaranteed to make you happy, and his price is, he's going to do it, you know, at virtually no, he's not going to really make anything on it. He's just doing it because he wants to help you uh, have this great house to live in retirement. So you're a little bit skeptical, but, you know, he seems like a nice guy, and he's got a bunch of letters that you don't understand after his name that are really insurance certifications. But so you go ahead and you sign a contract, and then the first day he shows up to start building your your house, and you expect him to come with you know, concrete people and framers and plumbers and everything. And he shows up and he's driving a little compact, uh, you know, let's say a smart car. This contractor, he's got a smart car and he gets out and on his tool belt, he's got a hammer. And he comes out and he starts, uh, you know, going to start building your house. And you're looking at him and you say, well, don't you have any other tools or anything? He says, nope. All I need is a hammer. I can do everything I need with this hammer. This hammer fixes all the problems. I can build a whole house with just this hammer. And you would be a little bit nervous and probably go hire another contractor. The same thing, let's say you went to the doctor and you say, Oh, I've got a headache. And he says, Well, just take this aspirin and lie down. And oh, hey, that worked. You know, so the next time you go back to the doctor and you say, Oh, well, you know, I've broken my arm. He says, well, just take this aspirin and go lie down. And the next time you come in, um, you know, you've hurt your back. And he says, well, just take this aspirin and go lie down. And he's always prescribing the same thing, the same thing with a contractor. He thinks he can fix everything with just a hammer. Well, that's the analogy that I like to use with these annuity salespeople, is no matter what your age, no matter what your income, no matter what your tax situation, no matter what your risk tolerance the solution is an annuity, and there's virtually no personalization whatsoever. Um, the reason they do it is because these annuities pay huge commissions, uh, at least 5%, some of them on up to 7 8% commission that are paid to the advisor that's selling them to you. And I thought I would uh, take another article from the press so that you don't think that this is just something that I'm making up. I mean, all you've got to do is Google uh, variable annuity, you know, pitfalls or drawbacks. And if you understand how to filter what you're looking at, and you've got to filter out all the people that are in the industry, the articles that are put out by the, the insurance companies themselves, as well as advisors, you'll come upon a whole wealth of information of people that have written uh, very good studies about this topic. And this was, this is not a study, but this is a news it came out in Investment News uh, May 20th. Investment News is a, um, a newspaper written for people in the industry, and the headlines is Jackson National to deaccelerate VA juggernaut. <laughs> the corporate mandate to throttle back sales comes as a little bit of a surprise. And the gist of the article, I'm going to highlight some of it, the gist of the article is this Jackson National has been on a tear just selling annuities like crazy to everybody. You know, if you could fog a mirror, their advisors were selling you annuity. And what they found out is they've got to slow down because, as you recall from the show last week, your annuity is guaranteed by someone, and that someone is the insurance company. 
And frankly, this article gives the impression these people aren't really sure what, what sort of mess they made. So it says, under orders from his corporate parent to slow down the torrid sales pace of its generous variable annuity contracts, Jackson National hasn't yet revealed how it will take its foot off the accelerator. Its annuity sales of $4.6 billion in the first quarter, up 45% from a year ago. So these advisors are out there just playing on the fears of, of people. And it says, for some time, executives have been questioning how the insurer could offer a wide array of sub-account investments without any limitation on allocations. Their flexibility and investment choices have catapulted to third place among sellers with $14.7 billion in sales last year. If you look at um, the commissions on that is tremendous, by the way, $14.7 billion in sales. Um, up from $6.5 billion in 2008. And they're the top variable annuity producer out there. Concerns about risk exposure in the current low interest rate environment led Jackson's two biggest competitors, Prudential and MetLife, to throttle back their offerings. So, once again, the insurance company is guaranteeing when you give them their your money, they're making some sort of guarantees. And what the gist of this article is saying is they're saying, whoa, we're not sure if we can actually guarantee all these policies that we've put out there, that we've gotten, gotten ahead of ourselves. Um, actually, I look at the clock here. We're running out of time for this segment. Make sure you come back and join us where we'll finish up this topic. So for all things money, I'm David Blaine, and we'll be right back after a short message.